Hello friends and happy Cape Smiths! Today I'm going to be walking you through step by step the instructions for the gnome cape, which is this one right here. This cape is currently live on my Kofi, and it is fully lovely if I do say so myself. It's full of whimsy and joy and that is definitely where all of the volume comes from. It has three different hood options and enough volume to fit any hairstyle into. Even Brooks could wear this cape. But that's enough intro, let's jump into the video. Cut out two of the gnome hood pieces on straight grain. And while you're doing this, be sure to mark all of your darts. The gnome hood has three variations and three lines on the pattern marking the style of each variation. Cut along this to change the style of gnome hood that you're cutting out before cutting out your fabric. You won't want to cut the fabric and the paper together as printer paper can be rather thick and that can distort the design. Be sure that you've cut out all of the gnome hoods that you want in that particular style before altering your pattern to move forward. This pattern requires at least 4 yards of fabric of at least 44 inches wide and this is the most effective cutting layout for it. To start with, if you have any gores that are double gores, especially in your front, you're going to want to sew your gores together first before inserting them into your cape. You do this by sewing a straight stitch 5 eighths of an inch away from your raw edge, just like you would any other seam. And then you're going to take it over and press it well. You want to make sure that your corner is nice and flat before continuing. Line your gore up face down along one of the insertion slits. Make sure that the corner sticks up just a little bit past the edge. This will allow your actual seam lines to meet in a corner instead of running over each other. Also, it'll make for a stronger gore. I would recommend starting your seam at the tip of the gore, backstitch into it, and then continue forward. I use a slighter seam allowance than I do on the rest of the gore at the very, very tip. I then let my seam slowly become a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance as it goes down. Some people prefer to hand sew their gores in, and if you would like to do so, I will link a tutorial for that in the description box below. So, once your first seam of your gore is inserted, you're going to go ahead and iron it as well as you can before continuing. To sew the second seam, you're just going to lay your fabric on the gore as flat as you can get it. You don't want to have the fabric tugging or pulling or wrinkled in the seam, so go ahead and really smooth that out, possibly steam it with your iron, and then pin it in place. You can see just how flat and clean all my seam lines are. To start off the stitch, you're going to do it just as you did before, back stitching into the start line of your seam. You don't want to cross over the stitch line from the previous seam too much because then you'll get an awkward little tangled section, but you do want them to just barely kiss each other. When you take your gore straight off the machine, it's going to look a little bit wrinkled and awkward. What you're going to want to do is iron it very, very well. I would recommend using a lot of steam to kind of shape the fabric into a nice flat line. And be sure to iron from both sides, starting with the inside and moving on to the outside. I like to dampen the outside edge of my gore and then press it really well. This works phenomenally on wool to give you a nice solid piece of fabric. I'm using a cotton flannel that has a little bit less stretch though. And once it's ironed in place, your gores are done! For added volume and coziness, you may want to add the optional front panel. The front panel is cut out of the same fabric as the rest of your cape and you will want two of them, one for each side in the front. Simply lay it face down on your cape and pin that seam together. The angled side should be facing outwards. Sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. And of course remember to iron it. If you are going to add in the front panel, I would strongly recommend gathering your cape, or at the very least gathering it in the front to accommodate the added length of the panel. Before attaching your hood to your cape, you're going to go ahead and sew in the darts. I like to pin along the red lines. Simply line up the lines of the dart and pin them in place before taking them over to the machine. 
I like to start point first and then sew down, but there's a lot of other ways to do it and I'll link a tutorial on sewing darts. For a nice professional finish, go ahead and tie off your loose threads before taking pinking shears to finish off this seam. You don't want any extra bulk in your hood. To pin your hood to your cape, I find it's easiest to lie the hood face up and then pin my cape down onto the hood. And whether I've gathered the hood to the cape or the cape to the hood, I like to sew my garment with the gathers facing upwards. This seam is sewed with a simple straight stitch and a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And whatever you do, don't forget to backstitch! To start the hem for the bulk of your cape, fold under the fabric by 1 eighth of an inch and press it down. I recommend doing this in stages, so press all the way around before continuing and folding your fabric under by a half of an inch. You're going to press this as well and pin it just a bit and take this over to your machine. From the right side of your fabric, go ahead and sew this down. Feel free to follow the guide mark on your machine for half an inch and make sure that your needle is catching the back end of the hem fabric with every stitch. Better slow than sorry. Now the bottom edge of your cape is going to be a little bit more difficult to hem. I would actually recommend ironing this all in one go. This is because the folded section of your hem fabric is going to need to be eased into place with the steam from your iron to make it lay flat. And that's easier to do in one go than in two strips. But once you have all of your hem fabric finagled and laid flat, you can go ahead and put it through your machine. This is very similar to the way you did the rest of the hem for the cape. Albeit a bit wider, as this hem is one inch wide as opposed to being half an inch wide, but I still recommend going slowly and carefully. To make your tie straps, the first thing you're going to do is fold down the edges and press them in. All of the raw edges should be facing inwards before you fold it in half. This will encapsulate all of them perfectly. Take this over to your sewing machine and with a straight stitch, go ahead and stitch along the edges of your tie front. You'll likely want to go along the folded edge as well so that it matches. Now you're going to sew your ties down to your cape. I like to sew them along the seam where your hood meets your body. If you're going to be understitching the seam allowance, it's a really good idea to hide the ends of your tie front under the understitching, or alternatively, you can do some hand stitching to whip them down, and this looks very aesthetic and historical, or you can always just do some nice easy top stitching with your machine. Whatever floats your boat. As we transition into the reveal footage, I wanted to first show off what all three hoods look like in their completed form. As you can see, there are three various degrees of whimsy. You can either have a nice basic hood, a in-the-between gnome hood, or this absolute behemoth of whimsy and wonder. Look at it flap! It's not the slightest bit practical, but I love it all the same. But here you are, here is your reveal footage. I'll, I'll stop talking for a moment. This orange cape was made using the front insert, and the pink cape here was not made using the optional front insert, so as you can see it has a lot less volume than the dreamy orange one. But both of them are equally fabulous in their own right. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you and all that you do to support me and my channel, and I hope that you found these capes useful and wonderful, and please share with me if you decide to make one for yourself. I love seeing the things that you guys make, and until next time, keep sewing on, I guess! Hit the button. It turns red when it's recording. Hush you. <laughs>
I'm colorblind, dang it. Perfect. 